Welcome to the midweek message. We're taking some lessons from Ecclesiastes chapter 6, and I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. We're reading verses 7 through 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. All man's labor is for his stomach, yet the appetite is never satisfied. What advantage then does the wise man have over the fool? What advantage is there for the poor person who knows how to conduct himself before others? Better what the eyes see than wandering desire. This too is futile and a pursuit of the wind. Whatever exists was given its name long ago and is known, and it is known what man is. But he is not able to contend with the one stronger than he. For when there are many words, they increase futility. What is the advantage for man? For who knows what is good for man in life in the few days of his futile life that he spends like a shadow? Who can tell man what will happen after him under the sun? So let's look at these verses individually. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. All man's labor is for his stomach, yet the appetite is never satisfied. A frustration, part of the futility of life for Solomon is that you can never be satisfied no matter how much gain you have like the, the man in Texas that said he didn't want all the land, just the land that was next to his. The appetite of a man, of a person, is never satisfied. Verse 8, what advantage then does the wise man have over the fool? What advantage is there for a poor, per, a poor person who knows how to conduct himself before others? Uh, what is the advantage of wisdom if a person is never satisfied? What is the advantage of good conduct if a person is never satisfied? People are basically the same. No one can be satisfied. Everyone goes to the same place, Solomon has already told us. Verse 9, better what the eyes see than wandering desire. This too is futile and a pursuit of the wind. Now, he said a, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, uh, in essence. What you see, what you materially have, what is tangible is better, th is better than just dreams. And uh, we make uh, many uh, of our uh, projections and investments based on people's ideas of what might be. But what you actually have is better than what could be, Solomon said. That's futility as well. Verse 10, whatever exists was given its name long ago, and it is known what man is but he is not able to contend with the one stronger than he. Uh, what is today has ever been. And the nature of man is always the same, regardless of station in life or abilities or uh, things that are, that are possessed. And yet, uh, a man cannot contend with God. That's the one that is in mind. Verse 11, for when there are many words, they increase futility. What is the advantage for man? Jesus said, let your speech be yes, yes, or no, no, because everything else that comes beyond that is sin. Um, a lot of arguments are circular in nature, and there's no real answer for um, the questions or the uh, philosophies posed. Many words increase futility. Better to be clear and speak few words than to uh, be verbose and um, increase um, disinformation and confusion. And verse 12. For who knows what is good for man in life in the few days of his futile life that he spends like a shadow? Who can tell man what will happen after him under the sun. Life is a shadow, it's a vapor, it's a mist. Who knows what's good anyway for an empty, futile, vain, unfulfilling life? This futile life that everyone lives uh, in their days on the earth, who really knows what is good? And who can tell a person what will happen after them, despite all their planning and all their pains 
and all their prognostications and desires for the future, no one really knows what is going to happen.